not shaking. <laughs> He's fine. He doesn't understand what the big deal is. These guys are it's everything they can they have in them to knock it off that bed. Both of these guys have a similar problem. The brain will go into a pretty aroused state very quickly. And so we're, we're telling them as soon as you feel that urge to self-regulate and to relax, okay? So that's state of mind change. We want them to remain calm and passive in the environment. And, and unless the handler has told them to be interactive with the environment. And a lot of dogs, if they're a little older, they're not used to having somebody micromanage them. So that's where you see the shaking and stuff. This guy, he's young, he doesn't need to rehab, so this isn't phasing him, he's just chilling. You can see these two are struggling. It's a good example of the difference between a two and three week dog. Yeah, perfect example. So there's a two week dog, <laughs> and these are three week dogs, right? Because they have a little bit more work to be done, right? It's more work to be done on the mind. But we're headed there, and this is just a little light exercise. It's a light day today, it's Sunday. This is, you know, they're on duration place, and we start doing little things, little distractions, and then you know, to not pay attention to these. And if it gives us an opportunity to use the double down, then we will. So we get to have kind of micro conversations today. They won't be asked to use the brain in any other way. For training after this, or going to go relax. And then tomorrow, Monday, we're back at the active learning where we're going to be going out and about and practicing our commands and our state of mind and all that. Okay. Just a little, little thing. See, Dennis get, is getting it. She's serious. He's, he's getting better, but he's still focused on a little longer. He completely, as soon as he feels himself even starting to look at the ball, which for him, by the way, means prey drive. That he, he doesn't play with it without prey drive. So, And we've told him no to prey drive multiple times since he's been here, so he'll see that ball, and I'll know he's in a good space when he doesn't look at the ball and looks at me for direction. That's when I know he's, he's doing very well. Same with this guy, right? Hmm? <laughs> this first time holding this. Good boy. I haven't had to correct him yet, believe it or not. He keeps putting himself back into the set and then moving down. That is a good example of the difference in, in um, um, I guess, uh, difficulty between two weeks dog and three weeks dog. Okay? So, yes. Hope you're doing well. Leo can probably learn down tomorrow. Who's that? Leo is, yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think he's ready to learn down. Right? He kind of already knows down a little bit. Somebody taught him before, so <laughs> should go pretty quick. Here's the line from the shepherd. So I got my tool ready before I said no because I want to make sure he gets a correction. Right? So it's because of Izzy. She's out in the yard. So she's in the bathroom right now. But when she was moving. So when, when a dog starts whining on duration place, is the perfect time to disagree with it with a correction, then ask for a double down. And if they don't know double down, it could be a learning experience. They might pick up on it quick. So the way we came up with the double down is because when we would disagree with whining and they were in a down, they would put their head down. And that's when we knew that they were in a good space. Good boy. Start marking it and there you go, start aiming it. So, here the breathing's getting heavier. This guy's mind's getting a little bit more amped, but he's compressing it. He's, he's trying to keep himself together here. 
I'm going to then ask for a double down, okay? I'm going to correct first. Okay. Now my timing could have been better, could have been while he was panting and really, but he was listening for Izzy right there. Okay. So. Now I'm going to go for Dennis. Eventually, you, you, you use this part of the training when you're out in public and when you need your dog to disengage with the environment. We need them to, the conversation is, I don't want, I want you to passively watch everything. I don't want you reacting to everything. Okay, so obviously these dogs are both reactive. If they weren't, you wouldn't be seeing them struggle. React, okay, so the thing about being reactive is they just react to the environment without thought. So sound and they just react, right? So if you're living like that, that's how you get through your day, then every little sound, your body is like, it's, it's jerking around, you're, you're acting on impulse. As soon as they learn a command like place, and all these sounds that they normally trigger to are being heard, they know they can't get off. So it's like they're stuck. Before they completely make the flip, they're stuck between should I stay or should I go? And that turns into a vibrate. Because it's like... <laughs> Part of them is, is still considering getting off the bed, right? They're struggling, committing, and relaxing, and saying, okay, fine. So when we get them to a little bit more of an elevated state and then disagree with it, and bring them all the way down to zero, we're telling them, when, when we correct you, we want you to bring yourself down to zero, we want you to calm down. That's why when we correct them, after they're fully trained, they calm down, they don't, they don't spaz out, right? They relax, they know it's a safe time. Okay, so. I'm just going to ask for a double down for everybody and then hold them accountable. Down. Good, okay, so they're compliant. So now, they're compliant when I ask to do it good. That right there was, mwah. that's what you want to hear, that loud breath after you ask for a double down. He's had enough reps where he's starting to understand how to use it and why we use it. This guy hasn't quite figured it out, but he knows what the behavior looks like. He knows to put his head down. With a little bit more experience, you're gonna see him take that deep breath and really figure out what he's supposed to be doing in that double down, okay? This guy's starting to figure it out. It took a handful of experiences for him to really realize that it means to disengage with the environment altogether, right? Um, and then when you have those experiences just right, that's when you see that breath. That's like the sign that your dog's really relaxed, really just completely let go of the fact that he's gonna go get the ball. Okay, and this doesn't mean, look, this doesn't mean he can't swing his head around, see the dog and start to build up again this is the beginning, right? So if I see him, and you can already see it, you see it? Now he's starting to shake, now he's tense. His body was loose for a second, I felt it, and I'm feeling it tense again, but you see him battle it, because he knows the, the criteria here is to disengage and to relax, and definitely don't whine, right? So you'll see a dog kind of making his own choice and then deciding to relax. Okay, I didn't correct right away, I was gonna let him see let him explore the boundary of what I find acceptable so that he can understand it fully. Okay? Guinness and I have some more conversations to have. <clears throat> He's stuck right now. Right? This is this sometimes happens right in the beginning when they're on duration and they're struggling like this. He's gonna need a few sessions like this where he's just laying down for multiple hours at a time while the world goes on around him. Then he'll get it. That solves that. Okay? Of course, we're going to correct any time he tries to get off or any time he whines. Any time he gets elevated in his, in, in his state, we're going to correct as well <laughs> and keep him relaxed. But you can see it's not one correction at this point and then they're done for the whole session. We monitor. That's why we do these group durations so we can monitor the states of mind. And 
this is the first one to go there together, and if we do more, we'll see them finally get into this nice state and pretty much stay there the entire group duration. All right, but this is how it goes, especially if you add in little distractions, you get opportunities to correct a dog who's reactive. Okay, this guy's not being reactive, he's being bored. It's the difference. He's just bored, he's soft, he's not, it doesn't feel serious to him, you know. They're going, they're having different experiences right now, for sure. These two are similar experience, he's just, But you can see, time is our friend. They haven't even been here an hour yet. So, of course, we're playing around the first hour, making sure we get the right experiences, making sure everyone's learning. And then there's gonna be multiple hours where they're just gonna just relax, okay? Good. Good job. And you see, this is what's interesting. Is sometimes, if Izzy starts to get going, sometimes he'll correct himself. And if he doesn't, then I correct. So this is micromanaging because at the end of the day, right now, they're not going to get off the bed, right? And that's what place is, but we're going into the mind. The mind on place so that when they're finished, you can just click and you get a healthy mindset. You get a refresher button, right? It's to help your dog reset that, that mind and start from a healthier space, okay? So again, this is newest to it, so he's going to get some TLC. I'll let him relax. 